Hi, everyone. Welcome again to day one of MBA Spotlight, our first top MBA virtual fair hosted by GMAT Club. Uh, we, are, we will have top schools joining us every single day to talk about their programs. We'll also host admission experts and consultants weighing in on your profile questions. And finally, we will also have current students panels talking about their MBA experiences. Now, to walk us through Anderson, I wanted to introduce Adrian and Stephanie. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm in... <laughs> Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Palencia. I'm one of the associate directors of admissions um, here at Anderson. Um, I'm going to be starting the presentation, but my colleague Adrian will be joining us um, to answer a few questions, as well as my colleague Vicky, who's also going to be available through the chat. Um, so, Adrian, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Yeah, wonderful. Hi, my name is Adrian Aguirre. I'm one of the Associate Admissions Directors. I work with Stephanie quite closely, and I'm very happy to be here to support her, although the show is hers, and I will be coming a little bit later to uh, answer questions with her as well. Perfect. Thank you, Adrian. So, like I said, um, I just want to thank everyone for being here this morning, this evening, whatever time zone you're at. Um, we're really appreciative of you spending um, some of your day with us and really learning more about our MBA program. And thank you to the GMAT Club for putting this um, wonderful event together for us. Um, so to first start out, um, I do want to just introduce you a little bit more about Anderson. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our core values um, and really to learn most about Anderson. Um, you have to know who we are and what we value the most. And the first thing is we really love to share success. So our MBA program does foster collaboration and working together towards a bigger goal. Um, the second thing that we really value is thinking fearlessly. Um, our MBA program really encourages our students to sort of break the mold and challenge the status quo. Um, they're really always constantly driving for change and looking for innovative ways to do new things, introduce new products, um, new ways to really run a business. And lastly, uh, driving change. At the end of the day, um, our program is really promoting people to make a difference and make a change in this world. So that means whether you're launching a new tech product or running a nonprofit organization, um, our students are really making an impact throughout the world and throughout the country and within our communities themselves. Um, so these are the things that we really value. These are also the things that we are looking for in students, um, in our prospective students. We want to learn about how you can contribute to our community and through these different values that we share. Moving on. Um, another thing I really want to talk about is one of the integral parts of you even coming to Anderson. Um, obviously, the career component is probably one of the most important things that you can really think of. And um, that's why I want to talk a little bit more about our Parker Career Management Center. So for those of you um, who don't know much about Parker, um, it is consistent, consistently ranked as one of the top um, career centers for business schools throughout the country. Um, it's been ranked by The Economist and Bloomberg Business Week for many years uh, for best student satisfaction. Um, they help you in a variety of ways, um, everything from planning to implementation to actual assessment um, through a variety of different resources. So in terms of planning, um, they offer career counseling, workshops, everything that you can really think of, including different types of assessments as well to make sure that your sort of your background and your personality aligns with the career interests that you have. In terms of implementation, um, there's also mock interviews as well as on-campus recruiting that is done throughout the school. Um, every year we have over 150 companies who come to campus um, to do recruit, uh, to recruit uh, our students. And lastly, um, about assessments, um, they help you through the decision-making process. Many of our students receive multiple offers so they really help you weigh the best option for you. Um, on top of that, they also help with negotiating salaries um, and then future career planning as well. Um, our students are so successful because of really what Parker does for them. Um, they have something called the Parker Career Series, which is held very on, early on into your, your um, education here at Anderson. 
And the Parker Career Series is basically a class that you take your first quarter. And it helps you prep, prepare for um, resume writing, um, uh, cover letters, um, networking, interviewing, everything that you can really think of. You're learning that as soon as you're, you begin class at Anderson. And the reason for that is because recruiting starts so early on in the process, we just really want you to be prepared. Um, another thing that we do offer our students are something called uh, Anderson Career Teams or ACT Teams. Um, and they're run by ACT coaches. So the coaches are second year students and they, they put uh, first year students in a group, usually between four to six people. And the second year students teaches them every, the ins and outs of a particular industry or function. And that way students feel comfortable, like they're in a safe place where they can ask questions. And obviously the second year student already went through recruitment. Many of them already have jobs lined up for post MBA. So they really are there to teach you the ins and outs of those particular industries. Um, ACT teams can be on um, consulting, on product management, on sort of a broader tech industry um, focus ACT teams. So it's a really great resource for our students. Um, another thing that we offer is one-on-one -on -one, um, advising. We have many career advisors who have many years of work experience within a particular industry. They're both um, just general advisors, obviously the wall versed in a variety of different industries and functions, but they're also specialists as well. Um, so they range from anything from consulting to entertainment. Um, and they really give our students that one-on-one -on -one attention that they need to help them prepare for, for what's to come in, in the job search. Um, our advisors offer over typically over 40 hours of individualized one-on-one -on -one time um, with our students. So again, it is a really great resource um, to, to speak to them. Another thing that we do is something called days on the job. And those are offered by our various student clubs and organizations on campus. So with our days on the, do days on the job or DOJs, um, every year you have the opportunity to travel to a variety of different employers throughout the country. I believe they visit, uh, our students visit 120 companies last year in over 20 different cities around the country. So you spend some time learning about what it's like to actually work um, at that company. So it's a really great opportunity to get exposure to a variety of different um, industries and companies within whatever field that you're looking for. And of course, um, something called the Parker Portal, which is an internal website in which employers, again, come to campus, they post job openings. Every year there's over a thousand postings from companies looking for MBA students like you guys um, for either internships or post MBA jobs. Um, so that's really one of the biggest benefits of Anderson is Parker and all of the opportunities you have and connections you have to different industries. So another thing um, that is obviously really important is uh, when you're considering business schools is the location. Um, we feel that our students, since we're located in Los Angeles, that they really have limitless access. Um, LA is known as the 16th largest economy. Um, there's over, there's people from over 140 countries that speak 86 different languages. And then LA is also home to 300,000 small businesses, which is really great for our students. Um, in addition to that, um, obviously, we're, we're close to a variety of fun activities. I mean, you have the mountains, the beaches, um, all the amazing weather. Um, so that's also an extra plus. Um, but really, you just the great thing about being in L.A. is the access to everything. You, you have thousands of Fortune 500 companies um, or big companies, should I say, um, who have headquarters or some type of big office within Los Angeles. In addition to that, you're only about 15 minutes from Silicon Beach if you're interested in sort of the tech industry. So it's really great that you have access to all of these different industries and companies um, within a few miles of UCLA Anderson. Um, another great thing is our, our location gives our students the ability to do something called or have access to informational interviews. So because we have so many alumni and just general um, business people within the area. Um, you can reach out to them very easily. 
and go learn about what they're doing, what their companies are doing, what it's like transitioning into the specific roles. Um, on top of that, our students also have the ability to do something called academic internships. So it's not just your traditional summer internship like many other MBA students get um, at different schools. You can actually have an internship while you're a student at Anderson. So on top of going to classes, if you had maybe classes two or three times a week on those other days, you can actually intern for a company locally and gain some more um, experience and even money. Many of our students um, are being paid for those jobs. Um, so I think being in LA just gives you access to a lot of different opportunities that you may not get in other locations. So moving on here, um, let's talk a little bit about our curriculum. So what's really great about Anderson is that you have the ability to sort of deepen your knowledge and choose from 15 different specializations. Um, you can choose more than one. Many people, for example, want to learn about tech leadership and marketing analytics. So you can choose to, to do both of those specializations and you do have to take specific um, courses that are related to them. And then we also offer over 115 different elective courses, which is uh, quite a lot and it's quite a bit. So there's something for everyone. Um, the nice thing is that you can also take up to two courses at another one of our um, graduate programs. So for example, if you're interested in some type of law class related to tech, um, you're more than welcome to do that through the law school. Um, some people do them if they're interested in healthcare and taking something at our public health school. So it's a really great opportunity to sort of learn about all of these different industries. Um, so last, let's talk a little bit about finding your fit and what it's like to actually be a student at Anderson. So outside of the classroom, um, we offer over 15 different clubs and associations, everything from identity focus groups to interest groups. Um, there's also recreational clubs as well. Um, we have, for example, a basketball club, golf club, um, and then there's obviously those professional organizations um, for those who are interested in different things like that. Um, we also have different industry conferences. Some are on tech, some are on healthcare, some are on entertainment. So the industry conferences are many times put together by in combination with um, some of our academic centers that we have at Anderson, and then our student clubs as well. And then of course, there are case competitions. Case competitions are a really great opportunity to compete with different schools, different classmates, and um, potentially um, get some kind of reward for winning. And then of course, um, you do have the opportunity to volunteer. Um, we have something called the Reardon. This photo is from our Reardon program at Anderson. Um, we help people from our local community, um, students um, learn more about the MBA experience. Um, they also volunteer, or our students also volunteer at a variety of different organizations and schools throughout our local community. Um, the Dean has a speaker series, which they invite very high profile CEOs, for example. Um, I think they had uh, Dave Solomon, who's the, the I believe the CEO of Goldman Sachs a few weeks ago. So that is a really great um, opportunity to hear from some of the leading industry leaders and they speak to our Dean. So it's really amazing. And then of course we have student government, um, which is for students who really wanna be involved and drive change because we're such a student led uh, school. Many of our students are really proactive about making changes to whatever the school curriculum or uh, something that they're passionate about. So you do have the opportunity to be involved um, that way as well. Our students uh, every year donate over 5,000 volunteer hours. So that really speaks volumes of to, as to how committed they are of helping our local community. So now let's talk a, a little bit about what the actual application process is like at Anderson. Um, our application should be available starting um, August 1st. So look out for more information on that and our essay requirements and such. But this is just to give you a general overview of our application. Um, obviously you do have to apply online through our system. 
Um, we do require an undergraduate degree. So you will have to submit transcripts for your undergraduate degree um, directly to our office. We also require the GMAT or the GRE. Um, that is really up to you, whichever exam you choose to take. Um, and then for international students, um, many times we do require the TOEFL or the IELTS. If you have specific questions about that, I recommend um, you contact our office to see if you are someone who does have to take that um, exam. And then of course there is an essay section. Um, our essay prompts will change this year most likely. Um, so look out for those new prompts again. It won't be released until August 1. Um, we do require a resume. Um, and then there's also recommendations. Um, we only require one, but we accept up to two. Recommendations should be from a supervisor, um, usually that you've had within the last few years. Um, we can talk more about that later as well. And then of course, there is an interview requirement, which is by invitation only. Um, and you are usually contacted after we receive your application. And um, so everyone who is admitted does have to go through the interview process. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the admissions committee is looking for. Um, these are sort of the four different boxes that we, or different areas that we look at. Um, obviously academics is really important. We wanna see that you can succeed academically because the MBA program is very quantitative heavy. Um, we wanna make sure that you can succeed academically and be competitive with your peers as well. Because at the end of the day, we just wanna see that you're successful. So that's why we ask for your academic transcripts as well as the GMAT score or the GRE. In terms of career, um, that's another really big component of the application process. Um, you know, We're looking for people who have been able to work you, most are sort of our range, which I'll talk about in the next um, slide, uh, is usually between two to 10 years, but the average student has about four and a half years of full-time work experience. Um, so, you know, after the MBA program, we wanna see you continue to be successful in your career. So that's why it's really important that you sort of have a proven track record of success. And then of course, um, activities, extracurricular activities, we like to see that our students are really well-rounded and that they can be involved in a variety of things, sort of not just school and not just work, um, people that are passionate about helping their communities. And then um, lastly, fit. Um, we wanna make sure that you actually are gonna fit into the to our community and you're gonna be someone who's just as proactive and looking and hungry and just looking for change. Um, so that's why we talk about fit. Um, this is our profile for the class of 2022. So just this is the entering class that's about to start in the fall. And this is as of earlier this month. Um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of diversity, 40 countries represented. Um, our incoming class is 40% women, 36% international, and from over 198 um, different undergraduate institutions. So our, our class size is about 360 every year. So we're looking to, to fill around the same number of seats. And then as you can see, um, our years of work experience, about four and a half years. Again, don't let that deter you from applying. Usually it's anywhere between two and 10 years of work experience. And many times we have people with even more work experience than that. And in few instances, less than that as well. And then here's some information on the academic components. Um, the average GPA is about 3.5 and the average GMAT is about 7.06. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a bit of diversity in our class profile. So finding more information, um, there's plenty of ways to really get involved and to learn more about Anderson. We've already started offering different types of sessions um, whether they're coffee chats offered by our students. Um, they're also doing general information sessions, um, basically very similar to this. Obviously my team or the rest of our admissions team has started uh, recruitment. So we're doing a lot more of these virtual sessions. Um, and then hopefully, you know, things will improve a little bit and we'll start having more on-campus activities very soon. Um, we, I know we are also planning to, to make a video for all of you to, to see the actual campus, um, to do a virtual 
campus tour. Um, so I just encourage you to really reach out to us. Um, I'll share my contact information later, as well as you'll be able to meet um, Vicki and Adrian, who are also my colleagues in the MBA admissions office um, to learn a little bit more about the school. So always, we're always here for you to answer your questions. Please feel free to reach out and contact us if anything comes up. Um, so thank you. I'll start um, answering questions with my colleague here. Sorry, I, uh, I'm not able to see any of the questions. So if someone could read them out loud, that would be great. Oh, I, I think, Stephanie, the questions are on the screen for us to read. So we okay. have the first one, and it says, do we report our 10-point GPA as it is or convert it to a 4.0 scale? So since I just read that, I'm going to be the one addressing it. Uh, in the application, we don't expect you to make any conversions whatsoever. So report the numbers as they're given to you in your native country or in your transcript. Uh, we have enough expertise that we're able to make those adjustments and uh, assign credit where credit is due. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, question for UCLA is, uh, one of the pro one of the few programs without a stem track any concrete plan on incorporating that uh, stephanie do you want to talk about stem sure so actually we are stem approved um so that won't be a problem <laughs> for for any of our students who will start this fall and continuing classes moving forward all of our um programs at anderson are actually going to be stem approved not just the mba um, yeah. To to uh, to add to that, I, I think the uh, the designation or the official certification came to us as, at the same time that COVID nineteen sort of came into the scene, uh, kind of drowning out uh, our 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 press department. Uh, but what's important about STEM is that it applies across the board to all of the different specializations that you can pursue in the program. So it's not something that would only apply, let's say, if you were pursuing something that is uh, data heavy or, you know, for example, data analytics, it will apply to all of the degree, all of the certificates that, that you could pursue uh, at the school. Stephanie, can you read the, can you see the questions or am I the only one that can see them? I, I can't see them at all. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a better job reading and maybe I'll, I'll just give you this one. Uh, UCLA is one of the few programs, uh, oh, let me see. Stephanie, how about now? No, nothing. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, how does the Venture Accelerator help uh, the aspiring entrepreneurs and shape their venture to a global one? Sure. So there's a ton of resources at Anderson for entrepreneurs. Um, we do have the Venture Accelerator. Um, there, You do have resources through them. There is an application process to be included as well. Um, but the, the nice thing is that they really do have a ton of resources to really launch your company. Um, on top of money, um, you have access to different things like legal help as well. We team up with the law school and the law students um, often will help our students um, deal with all the legal implications of starting a new business. Um, you have space, you actually have office space, which is also really great. Um, so you don't have to deal with sort of the overhead. And I think the most important thing is just the guidance from um, the staff at the Venture Accelerator, who's amazing, and they've been through sort of the process themselves. Um, so I think that is really beneficial for our students. Good. I'm seeing a note here, Stephanie, that says you need to stop uh, your screen sharing, pressing or press Alt Tab to get back to StreamYard to see the comments. Uh, okay. In the meantime, it says here, are FEMA students able to participate in the same OCR opportunities as full-time students? I'm interested in the FEMBA program, but I would like to pivot into strategy consulting. Um, some of the activities are available to students uh, across different MBA programs. So I do believe that uh, students from all programs are able to join the clubs. With regards to on-campus recruiting, which OCR, OCR stands for, uh, there are some that may be restricted only to full-time MBA students and others that may be available to folks from other programs. That is 
uh, a little bit too specific, I think, for my knowledge at this point. Uh, but but there are some restrictions limiting the recruitment to to full time students. Given that, uh, I should point out that the career advisors uh, and the career, the Parker career staff is dedicated to the full time students. Uh, students in the FEMBA and EMBA programs have their own career advisors and their own recruiting process. Okay, so it says here, uh, could you please elaborate on how GRE scores are evaluated? Uh, I don't see uh, GRE stats on the Anderson site. Are the scores normalized to bring candidates in line with GMAT applicants? Stephanie, you wanna talk about yeah. GREs? Sure, so absolutely. So basically what we do is we convert your score into what a GMAT score would look like. Um, ETS has um, a calculator that you can input your GRE score and that'll spit out um, what the equivalent GMAT score is. And, and also we should add that we don't discriminate in any way, shape or form. So if you take one or the other, uh, you know, we, we consider both equally, we're, we're happy to take them both. Okay, okay. See, the next question is, what are the common industries that MBA students from Anderson go after graduation? So I would probably say the biggest three are um, tech, consulting, and finance. Um, those are probably the biggest three placements that we do. But, you know, to be honest, we place in a lot of different areas. And that's what's really nice about Anderson is that our students go come from a variety of backgrounds and they go into a variety of different areas. But tech, consulting, and finance are the largest. And, and that is in no small part due to our location. You know, being in Los Angeles, there are immense opportunities in the areas of technology, for example, but there is also a very robust healthcare uh, booming uh, sector. Real estate is quite strong. I think you could ask for a better location if you're interested in entertainment, for example. There is plenty of folks that pursue CPG roles. Um, even uh, jobs for folks interested in energy, whether it's renewable or traditional. So uh, we, we count of ourselves as very blessed because of the location. The next question from Chris says, what type of recommendations would be the most valuable for entrepreneurs with, uh, who would have been running their own businesses since college? So for someone in sort of your instance, um, I would probably do maybe even a partner or a, a client would work potentially. Um, obviously, you don't have a supervisor. You're sort of your own boss. So I think either a client or a partner, a business partner would work fine for in this instance. So the next, I can see it now. <laughs> would you explain more about FIT that was mentioned in the slide? What what's the admissions committee looks for. So I think that really goes, um, starts with the beginning of the presentation and sort of talking about our core values, um, sharing success, driving change. And um, so it's really those three things that are gonna be most important. And we just wanna make sure that, you know, you're, you're not ever really comfortable with leaving things the way they are. And we wanna see people who are gonna be proactive within our community, just be involved, being involved in student clubs, um, driving change. Um, so someone who's really well-rounded more so than just you know academics or just focused on their career. Um, we want you to be a proactive member of our community really. All right, I'll take the next one then. How will the Anderson program grow, change in the next year or in the next five years? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, the accelerator is, has been a, a relatively recent development for us, uh, but I think a reflection of our understanding sort of what, what the needs in the, in the marketplace were and how a lot of people were interested in uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I think we've seen over the last few years a pretty pronounced growth in jobs in technology in the area of product management and and, and uh, those data analytic uh, type uh, jobs as well. So there are constantly evolving initiatives that, that are sort of responding to what we're seeing in market trends. Uh, if, if I had to guess, I would say that given everything that we're seeing with the pandemic right now, I, 
I would expect to see healthcare take a, a, a more uh, sort of more of a leading role in some of the initiatives that we see. We've had our faculty uh, start a number of courses that were oriented to healthcare issues and, and use that as an opportunity to really do real interesting research on things that are happening in real time. Uh, uh, in terms of a, a longer uh, vision of the future, it is hard to tell. Uh, at this point, I think a lot of us are, are hoping to return to normal <laughs> before we can really think about uh, changes of the school into the future. But definitely, I, I think that the, the uh, importance and relevance of data analytics is also a big part of it as well. So what types of opportunities do you have for students interested in entertainment business, both on campus and off campus? Um, so we do have um, an entertainment specialization that you can sort of focus on if you'd like to. Um, we do have an entertainment business association, which is one of our professional student organizations. Um, we have something um, called memes, um, which is the, Adrian, would you help media <laughs> entertainment? Uh, it, 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 it sort of what we know. It, it brings together sports, entertainment, business, entertainment, media, and music. Don't ask me exactly how that aligns with memes, but it's one of our, our most popular academic centers. And there's something else that that we should probably mention, which is the producers program. We have a, a program uh, shared across different departments on campus, done in partnership with the film school. Uh, where our students are able to participate and take classes uh, taught oftentimes by uh, directors and producers in Hollywood, uh, sharing and, and giving people unique access to real, really the business of entertainment. And that's one thing worth pointing out that when we think of entertainment, we're really talking about the business side, right? So uh, you're not gonna see too many folks on the business school side that may be looking at uh, writing the next movie or directing the next movie. It's really around business, whether it's business development, finance, merchandising, marketing, uh, and that's what you will see in the business school. And then just to add to that, I think also, you know, going back to our location, um, LA is really sort of the entertainment scene and the entertainment sector. So we have tons of alumni locally as well, um, who are really great in helping with job opportunities, networking, and just having the access to resources here in LA is really an integral part of the experience at Anderson. So, oops. Uh, there's a possibility that OPT will change, making it difficult for international students to get a job in the U.S. Also, some plan to get jobs overseas. Uh, in these cases, how can the school help them? Um, in fact, we, we may be seeing the opposite of that, actually. Uh, the uh, STEM certification that the school has received or the STEM designation actually enables our students to receive three years of OPT. So what that means is that an international student graduating for, from our program will be able to stay and work in the U.S. for three years as opposed to the traditional one that was the case before. Um, so I don't necessarily see that there's going to be a reduction. We'll just have to see what happens in terms of policy changes we don't know what's going to happen. And the other important thing to remember is that there's an election coming up this November and, and, and really that could signal a very different direction. So does UCLA offer merit scholarships? How does one apply for these and what does UCLA look for? So yeah, all of our scholarships um, are merit based um, and we're you know looking at your application holistically. Um, there's no separate application process. You're automatically considered for them when you apply and you'll be notified when you're admitted. Um, I do wanna note, we do offer, um, we're a consortium school, so we offer consortium fellowships. Um, we also are a Forte partner, so we offer Forte Foundation fellowships as well, and then Ramba um, as well. So there's, a, and then in addition to our own um, UCLA Anderson fellowships. So there's quite a bit of options, but you are, again, you don't have to apply for them separately. You're considered when you apply and then are admitted, you'll be notified. 
Okay, Alan says, what are the application deadlines for next year? Uh, do FEMBA deadlines differ from the full-time uh, deadlines? In fact, we were just talking about deadlines last week in the office, and I'm going to say, and, and Stephanie can correct me if I'm wrong, that they are going to be the same date that we had this year. You're just going to change the year number by adding a one. So you're, I'm not gonna say the exact dates because I will get them wrong, but our first deadline is gonna be in October of this year. The second one will be in January. And I believe the last one is, is it in May, Stephanie, or April? So, so the deadlines will be October 2nd, 2020, um, January 8th, 2021 for round two, and then round three, April 16th, 2021. Good. Okay, okay. That's yours, Stephanie. Uh, next question. Um, are you offering deferrals to current admits? If yes, will the total number of seats available for next year's stand reduced to the extent of the deferrals? So, no, we are not offering deferrals for our current admits. Um, so, we do not anticipate um, this sort of crazy year affecting um, any of our seats for next year. Um, we are allowing students to reapply um, through sort of an expedite, expedited process, but we're not offering deferrals or guaranteeing, you know, seats to anyone. Okay. Uh, in the event of an emer uh, emerging second wave of COVID-19, what are the contingency plans in place? So that that is something that is actively being uh, sort of formulated uh, presently. What we have done this year is the orientation that would have taken place from October to September has gone online only. And we are planning to start in the fall. Having said that, the plan is to come in to the buildings with reduced capacity. So different classes would have diminished populations coming into sessions. So for example, if you had a class that had 50 people come together on Mondays and Wednesdays, perhaps half of the class will show up on a Monday and the other half would, will show up on a Wednesday. So you would have this alternating schedule allowing you to benefit from the in-person experience, but also reducing exposure. Uh, we're stepping up the cleaning process uh, and the monitoring of folks' health when they come in um, on, a, on a daily basis. So it's still in the process of being completely formulated and a lot will hinge upon what are the state guidelines and regulations that are sort of recommended for schools to follow. So that it can really cover a pretty wide spectrum and, and we'll just have to see how things evolve if there is a second wave and what we would entail. So what is the scope for nonprofit entrepreneurship ventures in UCLA Anderson? How can Anderson help one to achieve in this field? Um, so are you, I guess for clarification, are you asking about, um, how many students we have who are in the sort of nonprofit world that are starting their own ventures. Um, I would say that's probably a, a smaller number. Um, unfortunately, we don't have more statistics on the actual breakout of what industries our students in entrepreneurship are going into. Um, but if you are someone who's interested in sort of both areas, we do have special uh, specializations for both the sort of nonprofit sector as well as entrepreneurship. So you are able to take both of them if you'd like to. Um, we do have many people uh, interested in social impact at Anderson. Um, we do have something called Net Impact. We have an impact week at Anderson as well. Um, so it's a week long of programming specifically for people who wanna go into social impact. Um, they bring different industry leaders um, to talk about current trends and issues going on. Um, Again, our students are very much about giving back to our community. We part, we are part of Challenge for Charity, which is sort of a big competition amongst business schools um, about who can really um, volunteer more, give more hours to our local community. So um, that's another opportunity you can participate in. And those are on top of just our normal entrepreneurship opportunities that we talked about earlier in the presentation.
So because of COVID-19 pandemic, some companies have rescinded <coughs> uh, their offers uh, that they had previously extended. Has this happened to any UCLA 2020 graduates? If yes, how is UCLA addressing this in the future? I believe it's only happened <coughs> to a very small group of people. I, and we're actually seeing, you know, a wide range of things. You know, there might be, uh, you know, one or two or very few individuals who have had that happen. I think I know of a case of somebody who was getting a job at an airline and the airline, you know, is going bankrupt and, and presented the offer. But at the same time, we're seeing other scenarios like, for example, people pursuing jobs and consulting who are being told by their employers, uh, you know, Take the summer and instead of coming to work to our office, we want you to donate your time to a nonprofit of your choice. Do a project that is something that you're passionate about and here's your full-time job offer. So, uh, so you, you have both ends of the spectrum. Companies that are truly affected and other companies that are looking at this as an opportunity to really build goodwill and, and, and solidify relationships with, with students and with schools. In terms of what the school has done, uh, I know that there were uh, many outreach initiatives where our career center folks were reaching out to our network of alumni to source uh, opportunities for our graduates and to help them connect with their own contacts to facilitate uh, those job transitions. Uh, and for some, I, I think there was even talk about creating some internal sort of consulting projects on campus that would allow some of our students to do work for the university and, and receive compensation for that as well. So it's all happening in real time as well. We just had our uh, commencement ceremony this past Friday. And uh, as you guys, well, as you may know, maybe you don't know, but the employment and statistics are tracked for the first three months post-graduation. Uh, sometimes there are people that graduate and will continue to sort of finalize negotiations with employers or take a little longer to solidify the job situation. So uh, the scenario that you are describing is one that may be playing out actually in the next few weeks uh, and months. So I just read that we are out of time and we're being asked to provide a closing closing thought. Stephanie, do you have a closing thought? Um, sure. So, you know, I think at whatever point you are sort of on this MBA journey, um, know that there are a ton of resources out there available to sort of help you, whether you're talking to us um, or anyone else in our office or even talking to students. Um, there are a ton of our students who are doing different types of events, coffee chats, and if you're just trying to learn about the school. Um, fantastic! It's a good a good time to go out there and chat with them, talk to alumni, talk to the students. Just learn as much as you can about whatever school that you're interested in, and that's how you're really going to learn more about the culture and make sure that it's a good fit. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, if you're the you know whatever school that you're going to, you're going to be able to find a job. You're going to be successful, but you want to make sure that the next two years of sort of your life, um, you're, you're going to enjoy the experience. Um, so you want to be at a place where you're going to be happy. Um, so again, let's go out there, learn from the students, learn from alumni, and see what every school has to offer. And in terms of our own program, we do have a page on our website called Connect with a Student, where you're able to connect with our student ambassadors. Uh, as Stephanie pointed out, we are actually in the editing process of a video tour, so you'll be able to have a little virtual experience watching our campus and learning from our students' experiences. Uh, and uh, also come back and visit our, our website over the next few weeks. We'll be publishing a list of virtual events that we will be having uh, around the world, uh, calling alumni uh, from their different locations to join us to share their own experiences of what it's like to go through the program and also potentially uh, return with the MBA to their home countries if uh, you're coming from different parts of the world. And then really quickly, just to put in a plug for the next event, um, one of our students is going to be participating in um, a student panel, a typical day in the and then MBA. So she'll talk about what her typical day is like and what her life is like at Anderson. So I highly recommend that you listen in on that. And that's happening, I believe, was it at 11? It's, yeah, it's at 11. It's at, it's 11. at 11. So so hopefully you guys can stick around. 
and you'll have a chance to to maybe validate some of the things that we were saying through her comments. Mm -hmm. Okay.